evening. Our top stories tonight, Lamar Jackson finally got paid, and he deserves every penny of this deal, making him the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. We've also got updates on some rookies. We've got news across the league and more on Player Profiler today. Jackson has his bag. It has been secured $80 million in cash in 2023, $156 million over the first three seasons. Both are the most ever by an NFL player, and Lamar Jackson deserves every penny. He does. And there are people out there like Mike Florio, pro football talk, saying that this is actually a loss for Lamar Jackson, that Oh, he didn't get what he wanted. He took the L. He didn't get the fully guaranteed contract. Listen, anytime you set a precedent as the highest paid player in the NFL, not just at your position, in the entire NFL, and it's a quarterback league, I get it, but that's a win. There is no loss at all. It's not possible. And Lamar Jackson getting his bag, getting... $156 $156 million for through the first three years, $80 million this year. That is a win. And anyone trying to tell you otherwise is just trying to push an agenda that, oh, you need agents. You have to have your agents. Your agents are so important. What will we do without agents? No. Granted, agents are great in other assets. They can absolutely help your career. They can open your eyes to opportunities you didn't even know were there. But... Lamar Jackson did it himself, and he won. He beat the NFL, something that so rarely happens. And if you want to beat the NFL, if you want to make money using Player Profiler, the best way to do it right now through your rookie drafts is with the rookie guide. It is a must-have for everyone out there. Oh, I'm wearing Cody's hat in honor of Cody Carpentier. He has finished the rookie guide. It is a masterpiece, the best rookie guide you will read that combines both real NFL draft analysis and fantasy analysis. This guy goes deep. I mean, do you know who Tyon Evans is? This man wrote up and ranked 40 running backs, 40 wide receivers, 15 quarterbacks, and 23 tight ends. 23 tight ends? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. We've got fantasy rookie draft cheat sheets for super flex and single quarterback to go along with these write-ups that include analytics player comps and play style player comps. All the stats you need, the analysis you need to understand what kind of impact these guys are going to have in the NFL and for your fantasy team. So go to playerprofiler.com, go to any player page, go to the NFL draft section and click the button to get the rookie guide. It's just 10 bucks. That's it. That's all. It's not the most expensive, but it is the best. It really is the best. And Lamar Jackson is the best, but he happens to be the most expensive. So like I said, five years, $260 million for Lamar Jackson, $80 million this year, 156 through the first three. And he will have a cap hit this year of just $22 million. Next year, it'll be 33 The year after, it'll be 43 and a half. And then in 2026, the fourth year of that deal, that is when the cap skyrockets. It will become a $74.5 million deal on the cap, which means in 2026, or really in 2025, before that all comes into play, the Ravens will renegotiate with Lamar Jackson. So he's going to get this money, but... If he plays his cards right, if he stays healthy, he's going to make even more. He is going to renegotiate, get even more ahead of 2026. Like I said, this is a win for Lamar Jackson, not having an agent. He beat the NFL. He went out there and won negotiating by himself to become the highest paid quarterback, highest paid player in NFL history. And we just saw it a couple weeks ago with Laramie Tunsil. He doesn't have an agent negotiated the highest paid left tackle contract in the history of the NFL. Laramie Tunsil, Lamar Jackson, just doing it themselves. And that will not be the case for everyone. Not everyone has the time nor the wherewithal 
to negotiate all these contracts. I would need an agent. I would need to know what I'm getting into all this language, all of these other things, but Lamar Jackson just happens to be smarter than I am. So I don't blame him for not having an agent would be nice to get some of those extra opportunities by having someone that you're able to reach out to. But the fact that he is able to keep every penny in that $260 million deal, not a cent will go to agent fees. Brilliant. And I know he doesn't literally get $260 million. There's taxes involved, but not paying an agent that 3%, <laughs> that's generational wealth in itself. 3% of $260 million. Brilliant. Well done, Lamar Jackson. But Lamar Jackson, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what the butt was. There's no butt. Lamar Jackson does say that he expects to throw for 6,000 yards passing. That's not going to happen, but I love the hyperbole. hyperbole. As someone who is very hyperbolic myself, I respect it from Lamar Jackson. I am a fan. Sign me up for all the hyperbole. 6,000 passing yards, maybe 6,000 yards total from Lamar Jackson. He's still 4,000 yards rushing. Or sorry, 4,000 yards passing, 1,000 yards rushing. That's still only 1,000 yards. Wouldn't that be something? Either way, Lamar Jackson is going to have a hell of a season. Still has a strong offensive line. The only loss that they suffered, left guard Ben Powers, whose quality, don't get me wrong, but linemen don't often hit free agency. Linemen who played every game the previous season started every game. And so that leads to a Ben Powers getting overpaid. He is not the guard that the Broncos paid him to be. And they'll replace him with Ben Cleveland or they'll have competition, Patrick McCarry, and so on. The Ravens are in a good position. They have the same offensive line. They have much better weapons. Rashad Bateman, Odell Beckham, Zay Flowers, that top three. Devin Duvernay mixes in on some gadget touches. Mark Andrews, J.K. Dobbins, the Ravens are here. The Ravens are doing well. And the final most important note, probably for the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson, is this is the case in perpetuity. The Ravens cannot move on from Lamar Jackson in any way but cutting him. There is a no trade clause. There is a no franchise tag clause. So the Ravens either renegotiate with Lamar Jackson when his cap hit spikes to $74.5 million, or they cut him. Those are the two options. He's not going anywhere else. And the Ravens aren't going to take all that cap on the head. So Lamar Jackson will be a Raven as long as he wants to be a Raven. And that is a beautiful thing. We should root for Lamar Jackson. We should Lamar Jackson. I'm here for it. And that will bring us to some updates on the rookie. Speaking of money, speaking of generational wealth, Jalen Carter. $21.8 million contract for the first four years of his deal. That is fully guaranteed. Jalen Carter, get that bag. I know there have been a lot of conversations about Jalen Carter, about what he's like off the field, if you can trust him with that kind of money. I'm saying prove it. Just, just I'm, I'm saying clean slate, go out there, dominate, enjoy your money, and show us what you're working with. And Speaking of what you're working with, CJ Stroud is going to be working with Nathaniel Tank Dell, and that is by the choice of Stroud himself. Stroud obviously would have preferred Jackson Smith and Jigba. We heard it on draft night saying he would cut off his left leg to play with Jackson Smith and Jigba with the Texans, but that obviously was never going to happen. Instead, CJ Stroud tells the Houston Texans, I want Tank Dell. Get me my guy. I've worked out with him this offseason. I've practiced with him. I've thrown him the ball. This is my kind of receiver. And I talk about it all the time on this show, the happiness tax. You will pay a little bit extra to make important people happy. Player Profiler brought me to the draft. That is certainly something that they didn't have to do, something that they could have saved money doing. But instead... They pay that extra, and it makes me happier as an employee. Joe Burrow getting Jamar Chase. That makes him happier as an employee. When your employer does things for you, you respond, and you are a better worker. You are happy to be there. 
your per performance goes up, morale goes up. And this is the exact same concept with CJ Stroud and Tank Dell, which means Tank Dell is going to be playing early. And this is the perfect depth chart for him to crack early. It's Nico Collins. It's Robert Woods. It's Tank Dell. I know there's another wide receiver that I am blanking on right now that stepped up. Oh, John Mechie. Of course, there's John Mechie, but it is clear that CJ Stroud has his guy. He has his security blanket. And so often, like Julian Edelman, like Wes Welker, like all these other slot receivers, <laughs> don't get me wrong, they're all bigger than Tank Dell, but... It's that archetype. It is that kind of player with elite agility that can get open at will. Tank Dell, the best route runner at the NFL Combine. He has elite change of direction skills. He is going to get open. And even if he never becomes a deep threat that we would like him to be, like we saw at Houston with those four or five wheels at a smaller size, maybe that never materializes, but there's going to be a chance that Tank Dell becomes a PPR monster just from his work in the slot with CJ Stroud. And that'll be better than having Robert Woods out there. It'll be a lot more fun. So I'm excited for Tank Dell. I'm excited for CJ Stroud getting his guy. I'm excited for Tremoni Tucker. Trey Money Tucker. T R E apostrophe M O N I E Tucker, the wide receiver drafted by the Las Vegas Raiders. He needs to go by his full name, Trey Money, Trey Money, Trey Money, whatever it is. I apologize that I did not have time to look up the full pronunciation. I just know that that is a badass name. Move him up in the rankings. We already knew that he was going to be a better pro than Hunter Renfro, that he is like Hunter Renfro with athleticism. And this just moves him up the rankings just a little bit more. Trey Money Tucker. Wide receiver for the Raiders, look out. And Steve Smith would like you to look out for Jonathan Mingo. By all accounts, Steve Smith played a large role in the drafting of Jonathan Mingo to the Carolina Panthers. He talked to owner David Tepper about it. And that's interesting. That is one that we are going to be following along with all season long. And we will be following along with Mike Gusecki and his development with Matt Jones. Because I don't know if you've heard, but... This was a slumber party. This was a slumber party in New England. Mike Gusecki, he didn't have anywhere to go. He could have rented an Airbnb. He could have stayed in a hotel. He could have done something else while he got settled in the New England area, while he established permanent lodging. But no, Mac Jones says, hey, man, hey, Mike, come, come live with me. Come bunk with me. Come hang out with me. It'll be perfect. You know, we can hang out, we can work out, we can eat together, we can work out together, we can learn how to play football together. And has the roommate narrative, the bunk bed narrative, ever steered us wrong? People talk all the time about the shower narrative having played together in college. I'm sure Mac Jones has individual showers, so it's not the shower narrative, but it is the bunk bed narrative. It is the night buddy, love ya, sweet dreams narrative between Mac Jones and Mike Gusecki. This is one that I am going to be watching. And I don't know how it'll shake out, but I think Mike Gusecki is going to be used more as a wide receiver than we expect. I think, all things considered, Mike Gusecki is a bigger threat to Devontae Parker than he is to Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry is still going to be that in-line tight end. He's still going to play plenty in the slot as well, but Gusecki, I won't be surprised to see him lining up as an X receiver isolated on the backside, something that they tried to do with Devontae Parker, and it just doesn't work out as well because Mike Gusecki is a harder worker than Devontae Parker. He is going to put his all into it, and it's going to happen. So that is something that I'm going to be paying attention to. I'm going to be paying attention to Dexter Lawrence, nose tackle for the New York Giants. He just got $90 million, $60 million guaranteed, Four-year deal for the nose tackle for the New York Giants. Dexter Lawrence, incredible. Deserves every penny. But Saquon Barkley, he's now on the outside looking in, wondering, hey, where's my money? Dan Jones got paid. Dexter Lawrence got paid. What, what, when, where's my money coming from? 
We'll see if he gets paid. We'll see how long Saquon Barkley avoids camp, avoids workouts until he signs his franchise tag. He is not eligible to participate in any offseason workouts with the Giants. And so it's a mini holdout. And we'll keep you up to date with that. We'll keep you up to date with NFL Germany. We have the two suspected games that we're hearing are going to be played in Germany this year. The New Orleans Saints at the New England Patriots and the Chicago Bears at the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'm sure that all the Patriots fans out there and all the Chiefs fans out there will act super rationally knowing that they lost a home game. I'm sure that will all be okay. Everyone will be happy, smiles, no complaints. Matty Kiwoom, I could hear screaming all the way from the New England area when this news broke out. The man is not going to be happy. Oh, well, every team goes through it. Suck it up. And speaking of the Patriots, Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick only made, not only made, but was incentivized to make the trade with the Pittsburgh Steelers knowing that it would screw with the New York Jets. Belichick wanted to make sure the Jets didn't get their guy. And everyone knew the Jets would take a tackle if one was available, but they probably wouldn't have one available. And when Belichick traded from 14 to 17, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Broderick Jones. Dreams are ruined for the New York Jets. They do not get their guy. Belichick playing those mind games with the New York Jets. We'll see how much longer they last, though, because Jets might be the better team than the Patriots in 2023. Sticking with the offensive line, though, the Steelers upgraded theirs with Broderick Jones. Hello, miss. And the Commanders are, I don't know if they're looking to upgrade or addition by subtraction, what the correct phrasing of this would be, but they're looking to make some changes on the offensive line. Chase Roulier, the longtime center for the Washington Commanders, appears to be on his way out. Writing was on the wall when the team signed Nick Gates to a three-year, $16 million contract extension. Wasn't sure if he would play guard or center, but it's becoming apparent Nick Gates is the starting center of the future. Roulier is on his way out. And so is Andrew Norwell, the left guard for the Washington Commanders. When Ron Rivera was talking about his team, talking about plans, didn't mention Andrew Norwell in the left guard competition, only mentioned Chris Paul and Sadiq Charles. Not sure who will be the week one starter, but either way, commanders moving on some from some veterans. Rounding out the offensive line, Donovan Smith, the left tackle for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for Tom Brady. And well before that, he has signed with the Kansas City Chiefs. And initially, it was reported that Jawan Taylor, right tackle for the Jacksonville Jaguars, he would be switching to the left side after getting his mega payday. Now, now that the Kansas City Chiefs have another option at left tackle, they've changed their mind. Donovan Smith will be the starting left tackle. Jawan Taylor will be the starting right tackle. That is a dangerous thought. Donovan Smith going up against Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa and Baron Browning and Max Crosby and Chandler Jones and all of these pass rushers in the AFC West. But it's better to have Donovan Smith at left tackle so you can keep Jawan at right rather than go with Lucas Niang as your right tackle and flipping Jawan to a new position. Just adds more stability around Patrick Mahomes. And Fox might be looking for some more stability in the near future. They could be moving on from Tom Brady. Tom Brady might be breaking up with Fox Sports. He is having second thoughts. He is wondering if the travel is going to be too much because as we all know, when Tom Brady is in, he is all the way in. He is full bow, full bore, full go, full steam ahead. And he's not sure if he wants to be at that point of his life anymore, that if he really wants to be 150% in on Fox news, traveling around the country and I can't blame him. So We'll see if Tom Brady ends up pulling out of the deal with Fox, if he ends up going somewhere else, or if he ends up signing. Still has a year to decide. We're going to see this football season go by. Tom Brady still has a year, still could come out of retirement, but probably not. 
And our final story of the evening, one that is just absurdity. And this is something that we have seen from time to time on big network television. ESPN does it. Fox does it. NFL Network does it. This time, it's Kyle Brandt. He is tearing his quarterbacks, putting them into tears. Not crying tears, into tears as in rankings. And they were bad. They were real, real bad. Trevor Lawrence was in a tier below Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy G had his own tier by himself, which I get. You can call that the Andy Dalton Mendoza, the prime meridian of Andy Dalton, whatever you want to call it. Jimmy Garoppolo is the threshold of a starting quarterback. But to have Justin or to have Trevor Lawrence ranked below Jimmy Garoppolo, to have Trevor Lawrence ranked below Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson after the seasons that they just had? What are we doing? Trevor Lawrence dominated in high school. He dominated in college, and he dominated the NFL as soon as he escaped Urban Meyer. The Jaguars don't make the playoffs if they don't have Trevor Lawrence at quarterback. They do not come back against the Chargers without Trevor Lawrence. That's a performance in itself that Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson simply weren't capable of this year. So to put Trevor Lawrence below Jimmy G, below Deshaun Watson, below Russell Wilson, it is just disrespectful. And it's just silly. It's really just silly. It is clickbait on network television. And this is the problem with so many network televisions. And really, should I be surprised? No. But I'm disappointed. Because Kyle Brandt, we know that Kyle Brandt pays attention to player profile. That is the only reason he ripped off the Podfather's roller coaster bit. So Kyle Brandt knows who we are knows what we're doing. The problem I have with Kyle Brandt is if he knows who we are, why doesn't he pay more attention to us so his takes can actually be correct? 